Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over signal to noise ratio in a visual and slightly analytical way to hopefully allow you guys to understand a little bit better why the signal to noise ratio is so important in astrophotography. If you're interested in this hobby, then you've probably heard the term signal to noise ratio thrown around once or twice before. So first things first, what is the definition of signal to noise ratio? Going off of the Wikipedia page here first, signal to noise ratio is a measure used in science and engineering that compares the level of a desired signal to the level of background noise. So right off the bat here, we can see how this could apply to astrophotography, right? Our desired signal in this case would be whatever celestial object we're shooting. Could be a galaxy, a nebula, a star cluster. Whatever our object is, is the signal. And the background noise is typically coming from what we're shooting with being the camera. With long exposure photography, like we have to do in astrophotography, we have to keep the shutter of the camera open for longer and longer durations. So we're not just collecting signal from our object, but we're also collecting the thermal noise and background noise of the camera. So for the camera that I'm using, which is the ZWO 533MC Pro, we can see these statistics listed on the ZWO website. Right here, we have the dark current, which is essentially just the amount of thermal noise that's in the sensor. These are measured values taken from the manufacturer, and this is measured in electrons per second per pixel. With the x-axis being the sensor temperature. So it's fairly linear here. We can see the higher temperature, the higher dark current that we have. The lower the temperature, the lower the dark current. And again, the dark current in this is just the amount of thermal noise. So how many electrons are passing through any given pixel per second due to the temperature of the sensor? I took a quick calculation here since I typically shoot at negative 20 degrees Celsius on my camera sensor. So we can better see the improvement factor from a standard ambient temperature of around 10 degrees Celsius going down to negative 20 on my sensor. And by decreasing that temperature, we can see I've improved improved my dark current value by a little over 55 times from ambient temperature. So that alone helps a ton with the amount of noise that you're getting in your individual exposures, which in turn increases the amount of signal that your camera sensor is able to pick out from that noise, increasing your signal to noise ratio. So really it all just boils down to how well your camera sensor can pick out your dim celestial object apart from the camera noise. The higher the signal to noise ratio, the more your camera is able to see your celestial object. The lower the signal to noise ratio, the more difficult of a time it's gonna have to be able to actually identify the object you're trying to image. So the goal is to increase your SNR so that way we can better make out our object that we're trying to image. So let's go ahead and move on to some practical and visual examples using data that I captured of the Sculptor Galaxy a few months back. So here we can see I have various stacks of the Sculptor Galaxy starting with just three frames and a total integration time of nine minutes, going all the way up to 24 frames for an integration time of one hour and 12 minutes. So the first thing that you notice here is that the object is getting brighter and brighter with each consecutive stack and more integration time. I'm also noticing quite a bit of noise in this first image here of three frames compared to this last image here of 24 frames. Now these are just the original stack without any processing done so far. So this is just the initial look at our stacked data. Let's get a little bit closer here with the three frames and 24 frames. So I'm going to minimize these and I have a few previews set up so we can get a better look. So let's go to this first preview here, which is just a section of the background. So on three frames, it becomes very apparent how much noise we actually have in this image with such little integration time when compared to the image with 24 frames. There's quite a few stars as well that we were able to make out in this 24 frame stack, which we could not in our three frame stack. And the reason being is that those stars are so dim and so small that our camera was unable to differentiate those from the thermal and the background noise. But with more frames, we can get a better average per pixel. So that way when we stack them, even the tiniest amount of signal becomes apparent, averaged out over many, many frames. Let's look at this second preview here, which is of the edge of the Sculptor Galaxy. And again, a lot more noise that we're seeing in three frames versus 24 frames. And the same thing with a lot of the stars unable to be seen in three versus 24. 
such as in this section right here. So this alone is a good practical example of how signal to noise ratio works and how stacking the images can help us increase that signal to noise ratio. Now I'd like to show you some comparisons of the background extracted and the stars removed as well. So here I have five images. Starting with the top left, I have the three frames, then six, 12, 24, and then all of my data with 36 sub-exposures. Now in these images, I've done the dynamic background extraction, and I've also removed the stars so we can get a much better look at the galaxy itself. These ones are still in their linear form with just the auto stretch function enabled. And while all of these show a pretty heavy amount of noise, we can see that as we add more sub-exposures, the galaxy still becomes brighter and brighter with more and more detail. So let's minimize these and just look at our 36 sub-exposure and our three sub-exposures. So we can see that this is a pretty stark difference. If we zoom in on the galaxy itself, a lot of the fainter details on the outer rim become much more apparent when we add a lot more integration time. And the same thing goes for the dark structures as well. We're able to pick out a lot more of these dust lanes on the outer rim when we have much more integration time. And this is a good visual example of that right here. And then moving on again, I also have some non-linear stretched versions of these as well. So I went in and I adjusted the histogram to get the background a bit darker and I made sure that the histogram levels were roughly the same for each one of these stacks. So once more, we can identify that there's quite a bit more detail in this final stack versus this first stack of just three frames. And if we minimize these and just do a comparison of these two, we can definitely see it's much brighter. We get much more detail. A lot is not lost due to the background and the thermal noise of the camera. So we have a lot of visual examples here. Let's move on to some analytical comparisons as well. So that way we can see exactly how much more signal to ratio we have on our 36 stack versus our three stack. So let's minimize these and we'll bring back up our linear versions here. And PixInsight has this cool image analysis tool that we can actually calculate the signal to noise ratio with. So if we select our image, go up to script, image analysis, and SNR, we can click on that. And once that script finishes, we can see that it calculated the SNR value for every channel in that image. Channel 0, 1, and 2, which is typically going to be R, G, and B. It gave us an SNR value and a decibel value. Signal to noise ratios are commonly measured and shown in a decibel value. So we can run this script for each. This one is for my three stack. Now let's go ahead and select the 36 and go up to analysis and SNR once more. And now we have tangible numerical values of the signal to noise ratio for each of our stacks here. And in order to show you guys a true comparison of how much better the 36 is compared to the three, I made this little calculator here. And this is just our equation showing us that our decibel value is equal to 10 multiplied by the logarithm of our signal to noise ratio, which can be rearranged in order to see that the signal to noise ratio is equal to 10 to the power of our decibel value divided by 10. I'm just gonna go ahead and input these decibel values that PixInsight just gave me for our red, green, and blue channels. And then we can truly see and assign a numerical value to see how much better our 36 stack is compared to our three. So with those values input, we can see that there's about a 14 decibel difference between our nine minute integration and our 1.8 hour integration. And since this is a logarithmic equation, it's not necessarily as intuitive to understand how much better one is versus the other. So here I have the factor increase of the red, green, and blue channel, as well as all of them averaged out right underneath. And with the values that PixInsight gave us when measuring the signal to noise ratio, we can see that our 36 frame stack is on average 26 times better in signal to noise ratio than our three frame stack. That's a considerable difference and really explains a bit better as to why we can see a lot more of the finer details in our 1.8 hour exposure versus our nine minute exposure. And there's just one last thing I wanna show you guys to really highlight why signal to noise ratio is so important for this hobby. On the left side, I have our three sub exposure stack. On the right side, I have my 36 sub exposure stack. These are just in their linear form right now. So there's no processing, no stretch, no auto stretch applied to these images at this moment. But if we turn that auto stretch function on, 
we can see I'm actually zoomed into the core of the Sculpture Galaxy. And if we turn off the auto stretch, it again appears black. But if you really zoom in, you can start to see some pixels that are just a different shade of gray. And again, we're gonna turn on that auto stretch and see, wow, this is the core of the galaxy. But this is a good visualization of the small, small amounts of data that we're dealing with in astrophotography. And again, why signal to noise ratio is so important because we're trying to take these super, super dim objects and take beautiful pictures of them. But the amount of data that we have to work with is extremely minimal compared to almost any other type of photography. So any means that we can in order to increase our signal to noise ratio is going to make a huge difference when it comes to our final product. And lastly, I'll show you guys the final product itself. This is the fully processed version of the Sculpture Galaxy using my 36 sub exposures in comparison to the three sub exposures stacked to the left here. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them down in the comments or any advice as well. This hobby is spectacular because we can all learn from each other. It's super collaborative and I'm always looking for ways that I can improve my work as well. I'll go ahead and end off the video with just an animation that I made of this final product here of the Sculptor Galaxy captured right here in my backyard in Northern Nevada. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.